It's the night before New Year's Eve in Utah's west desert town of Eureka. This is a very small, small town. It's classified as a ghost town. Used to be a mining town. You've got whole families who are living in this town who have known each other for, in some cases, generations. One of those residents is 17-year-old Braylon Otteson, known as simply Breezy. But according to her family, she had lived a life that was anything but. She's grown up a very difficult life. She lost her mother about six years ago. She just wanted to be loved. And she seemed to have found that love with her boyfriend, 18-year-old Riley Powell. Did you feel like this may have been just a teenage fling or was this something serious? No, I felt like it was serious. This was a meaningful relationship. Mm -hmm. She felt safe with him. And Riley felt safe with her after enduring a childhood plagued with instability. As a young child, he was taken away from his biological mother, Misty Carlson, and adopted by his grandmother, Linda, and her husband at the time, Bill Powell. And you're Riley's father, correct? Right, I adopted him. You and Linda split up, but you had primary custody of Riley? Well, we both had joint custody of all the kids, but, but I pretty much had him then, and she had the two girls. Was Riley happy? Seemed to be and excited to ring in the new year together, now just a day away. But first, they had to make one more stop in Tooele to celebrate the holidays with Breezy's family before making the hour drive back to Eureka. And somewhere on their drive back from Tooele to Eureka, the teens appear to have vanished. When Riley and Breezy go missing, communication drops, you say December 30th, right? Yes. Nobody hears from them, no social media activity? No social media activity, no debit card activity, no one has seen their vehicle, nobody knows where they are. No one can get a hold of the teens. Then finally, after 72 hours of no contact, Breezy's family files a missing persons report with the Juab County Sheriff's Department. And with it being early January with the average temps in the low 20s, this time of year, the authorities know time is of the essence to find the young couple. We received a report uh, through the Sheriff's Office on January 2nd. Um, of them reported missing, they'd been missing, uh, estimated, you know, two or three days. Authorities do uncover Facebook messages between Riley and this woman, Morgan Henderson. The messages are from the night the teens went missing. Investigators interview Henderson. She tells them she saw the couple that night, claiming they stopped by her place in Mammoth on their way back to Eureka, but that they left after about 40 minutes and she never heard from them again. In fact, cops say that's the last known contact Breezy and Riley had with anyone. What was your initial impression of the case? Did you think it was a standard missing persons investigation or did you suspect foul play was involved? Well, on the onset, we didn't suspect foul play, but there's always that possibility. We're, we were treating it like a search and rescue operation. Law enforcement agencies from Jueb and Tuella counties joined forces to search the massive 10,000 square mile area. Friends and family of the victims join in on the search with one noticeable exception. In the beginning, I had reached out to Misty, Riley's biological mother. She didn't respond back to me. The first initial search on January 5th, we would have thought that she would have been there, but she had messaged me the night before and said, thanks, wish I could do more, whatever that I mean, means. But there's a lot you could do, right? Exactly, exactly. Those were big red flags. On the other hand, Riley's adoptive father doesn't miss one search. Bill, the first seven days from when the kids went missing, he took his day from sunup to sundown, he was searching for those kids. But after days of searching and no sign of the teens, their families offer up a $2,000 reward for any information leading to Riley's missing Jeep. We were looking for a Jeep, not kids at that point, thinking the Jeep was our key to finding them. Then on January 11th, nine days after the teens were reported missing, a Civil Air Patrol working with members of the Jewup County Search and Rescue makes a discovery. Located the Jeep. It's found parked near the Cherry Creek Reservoir, 14 miles from Riley's hometown of Eureka. So then once we found the Jeep, then as we started to you know, investigate the Jeep further, then it started to lean towards foul play. It's hidden in the bushes, there's windows rolled down, Two of the tires have been slashed. They've been cut from the sides, not necessarily from running over something. Their clothing or their items are inside, but there is 
nothing else. That's just, they are gone from the vehicle and it's just sitting there. As if it was abandoned or staged, according to the sheriff. Where that Jeep was located, um, both the tires were deflated in place. You know, evidence there at the scene suggested that that Jeep was driven into to that park location and then the tires were deflated subsequent to that. But where are the passengers, Riley and Breezy? Sadly, there is no evidence found inside the car pointing to the location of the missing teenagers. Here you think there's a key piece to the puzzle of their disappearance and and not only does it fail to answer questions, but you say it raises even more questions. Correct. The Jeep was our key and it failed and we just continue with nothing. Well, not exactly. While processing the Jeep, investigators do make one interesting find. There's a tow strap uh, on, the on the back portion of the Jeep. Investigative teams collect the tow strap and take note of its appearance, a camouflage colored strap. And now with the discovery of the Jeep, the sheriff no longer believes this is a simple missing persons case. It is foul play. I mean, I believe that. I strongly believe that. And the sheriff's suspicions seem to be confirmed when a witness comes forward claiming to have seen a truck towing Riley's Jeep on the same day the teens were reported missing. And who does this truck belong to? It was none other than the living boyfriend of Riley's biological mother, Misty Carlson. A man named Lee Shepard. That's huge. That's huge because, again, we don't know how the Jeep got out there, but you have somebody who sees that pickup truck towing Riley's Jeep. Investigators immediately get in contact with the couple. According to Sheriff Anderson, Misty fully cooperates with detectives, but her boyfriend, Lee? He, he's refused to interview with our detectives. You're, you're correct. It, it, that sounds like a major red flag. It, it is. It's a red flag. You know, it's something that, that heightens our suspicion. So much so that the very next day, the sheriff pulls a search warrant for Misty's home where she lives with her boyfriend, Lee. The property is near Lofgreen in Tuella County. It must have been disconcerting, though. It's not just any home. They're going into Misty's home. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are the last people you think would be involved. Right. Even more shocking, in the unsealed search warrants, investigators reveal they were looking for evidence of a homicide. The police are searching their house. The police are not only searching their house, they're looking for evidence that what is at Misty and Lee's house could have something to do with their disappearance and could have something to do with them being potentially murdered. It's stunning news for Breezy's aunt, Amanda. Do you think Breezy is still alive? I still have hope. From day one, from day one, it's always look at with Elizabeth Smart. It took nine months, but she was found alive. Not too so, far from here. Not too far, far from where we're at. And so there's hope. We're not giving up hope. According to the search warrants, inside the home, major crimes teams confiscate letters, receipts, drug paraphernalia, and something else that could blow this case wide open. Remember that camouflage tow strap found on Riley's Jeep? We found another another portion of that tow, or tow strap similar to that in, in another truck, you know, from, from reports through our investigation that is close in, in, in appearance and, and uh, configuration to that tow strap we found on the Jeep. That was the one found on Lee Shepard's vehicle? It was, yes. Coming up. That was the biggest surprise. Missing or murdered, where are Riley and Breezy? Are there many areas around Eureka where you can dump a body or bodies? There are so many places you would not believe it. I go looking for answers. Lee, let me just ask you point blank. Did you have anything to do with Riley or Breezy's disappearance? All right, we're outside Misty's mobile home now. We'll see if she's available to chat. Hey, Misty, Jason Matera with Crime Watch Daily. 